Hey everyone, Bridger here, and I want to tell you about an exciting Hearts of Iron 4 event we're running over the coming weeks. It's called The Stream Team. There are custom teams, custom victory conditions, and a few house rules. One player from each nation will be streaming this multiplayer game, allowing viewers to switch back and forth or watch multiple points of view at the same time. The game will be streamed each week on Wednesday night from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time, starting on July 13th. I will be playing the Soviet Union in the game. There will be three teams, the Allies, the Axis, and the common turn. Each nation will be played by a single primary player, and each faction will have one additional player that they can assign as a co-op player to any of the primary nations of their faction. This co-op player may change nation at the start of every session. Here are the victory conditions for the game. Note that the following conditions must be held for an entire month before victory can be claimed. The allies must hold London, Honolulu, Tokyo, and Berlin. The common turn must hold Moscow and Nanjing, plus either London or Berlin. The Axis must hold two of their starting capitals, plus either London or Moscow. The Axis will also win if at the start of 1946 they hold all the core territory in at least two of the starting Axis countries. For this condition, only the four home islands of Japan are considered to be core. If the game reaches 1946 and none of the above conditions have occurred, the Allies and the Comintern will share victory. Unless, of course, they want to continue and fight to the death. Now there is one other wrinkle. If the Allies lose Honolulu and it is in enemy hands for three months, they will be eliminated from the game. The game will be paused, and it will be restarted without the Allied players. And from that point on, London will no longer be a victory condition for either the Axis or the Common Turn. The purpose of this rule is to give the U.S. player a reason to spend some production in the Pacific Theater, and at least keep parity with Japan. The following house rules will be in place during the game. We will be using a mod called No Man's Land, which creates a significant amount of impassable terrain throughout the world, including the Sahara Desert, the Australian Outback, Northern Siberia, and Northern Canada. No player-controlled nations may be converted from their faction's ideology, either by their owners or their opponents. AI-controlled nations are all fair game for political influence, however. Communist nations may not justify a war goal without a claim until world tension hits 100%. The purpose of this rule is threefold. One, it gives the Axis control of the pace of the game. Two, it keeps the common turn weaker for longer. And three, it gives the Axis another reason to keep world tension low, promoting a more historical and peaceful early game. The United Kingdom is the only nation who may send Lend-Lease to the British Raj, and even then, it may only send a percentage of its monthly production with a maximum of 15%. This rule is designed to simulate the reluctance of the British to arm the Indians in large numbers, fearing an uprising against the Empire. It also serves to balance the game, as the current British Raj can provide hundreds and hundreds of divisions to the Pacific Theater if it receives equipment. The United States cannot join a faction until one year after world tension hits 100%. This is designed to curb the exceedingly early entry of the U.S. into the war. It also provides an incentive for the Axis to avoid raising world tension for as long as possible. Finally, a basic prohibition against exploiting bugs to get around the spirit of the game systems. For example, cooing the Maginot Line state is currently prohibited as it provides a 100% effective way to force the French off the Maginot Line, significantly altering the balance of the early war. Another example includes no air wings with a max size smaller than 50. Current information suggests that both close air support and fighters are significantly more effective if put in very small air wings. But, since that is extremely tedious, we're instituting a minimum so that no player will feel compelled to play in an optimal way, which is also incredibly unfun. We hope you'll join us on this journey. You can find all the links to the streams in the description below, as well as the full rule set described above. All of my streams will be available after the fact on this channel if you can't watch it live.